we're here to, to help you with any, any business needs that you have. Um, we do have a loan fund. We work with Jim Kunkel a lot. You'll meet Jim today. Um, you know, we work with the SBA. We work with April. So um, we're, we're here for any business needs that, that you have. Kathy, take it over. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Kathy. I am the Workforce Development Coordinator at the Fayette Chamber of Commerce. Um, so we are like your after party uh, party. So whenever you get established with your business um, and you need some marketing and advocacy and all that kind of stuff, that's what we do. Um, but we partnered with Baypen and West. Washington, I always get it wrong. CCD. Yeah, them, Washington <laughs> Economic Development Council, as well as the County of Fayette to bring this to you guys. Um, we hope that you get a lot of stuff out of it. We got some more masterminds um, yes. coming up, so be on the lookout for them. Um, and I am going to turn it over to Janet. So you have an idea, because that's why you're here. Everybody has an idea to, you know, turn that idea into a small business. And it can be easier than you think. And maybe it's time to act. And I'm going to tell you the story of Lori, who got a microloan from WCCED. And what Lori did was she made desserts for her local cafe. And everybody loved the desserts. So in addition to cooking desserts, making these homemade desserts um, for the local cafe, she hosted dinners of 14 on weekends. So, you know, she's in a pretty good mindset. And what happened was the cafe was closing. So she decided to go to April and use uh, SBA services to purchase the equipment, not the building. So she just purchased the equipment. And lo and behold, oops. There's a grand opening ceremony. So she turned her, her hobbies and skills of baking and cooking for a lot of people into small business ownership. Uh, the microloan didn't take long, did it, April? No, nope, not long. She had all the skill sets. She was already cooking for the cafe. She was already cooking large homemade dinners on weekends. So you just may be surprised what can happen to your idea. So how does the SBA help with that idea? Well, we fund small business development centers and women's business centers. And the St. Vincent College, SBDC, that's in this area, uh, can evaluate your business idea. They can see if um, it fills a niche in the market that, that needs there. You know, they needed a cafe in the area. Um, they can work with lenders, such as the micro lenders here, to get a business plan to help you turn your idea into a business so they can calculate in Lori's case how many dinners she had to sell each month to pay that loan back so that's what they can do to, for you they can project it whether it's haircuts online sales um, a cafe and they can assist through the life of the business we have clients that are with their SBDCs for decades they bounce ideas off them should I expand um, during the pandemic, you know, should I pivot to online sales? They can do all of that for you. So if you want a second location, a, a lot of clients keep their SBDCs counselors for life. They're professional counselors. Um, the cost is free, and all um, all of the train all of the counseling is confidential and professional. And there's an SBA office in every state. There's a small business development center in every state. And our area in Pittsburgh spans all the way from Erie down to Green and over to State College. So we're everywhere. And we love hosting these businesses because everybody loves small businesses. I think we all learned that during the pandemic, how much we really miss our small businesses. Um, and St. Vincent College, they were actually named our Mid-Atlantic SBDC of the Year in 2023. So that was out of 75 small business development centers. You're in good company. Um, since 2000, they've helped 10,000 entrepreneurs and they've pumped $170 million into the local economy. And they assisted today's special entrepreneur, which she has a great story. And again, they were behind her story. And when you click on their website, and um, if you get the slides, the, you can just click on St. Vincent College, it'll take you to their website. 
and it talks about their mission, and you can sign up for counseling right then and there, correct, Jim? Mm -hmm. And you can follow the SBA on X, which was formerly Twitter. You can always visit our website, and again, the link is there when you get your slide deck. And on our website, you'll find trainings, although this is from January, you'll find trainings, um, you'll find news and updates. You'll also find unique success stories that you might want to read just to see how this person did it, what their idea was, you know, just kind of to fuel your energy. And I just want to say thank you for showing up today, even though it did rain. And we do take your comments very seriously. If there's anything you need, um, if you would like more presentations, please let us know what topic you want. Um, and we will be glad to host it. So please email me. You can also formally go to SBA at our headquarters because they like to know how we're doing out in the field. And you can formally, um, you know, talk about our agency. And I want to thank you and I wish, want to wish you the best of luck. I know I always um, shop small. It's, I think we all learned again how much at the pandemic we really, really appreciated our small businesses. So thank you and good luck. Thanks. I wanted to just welcome Sue Quinn from, Pat, from uh, Senator Pat Stefano's office. Sue, would you like to say well, Welcome. Um, the senator is very disappointed that he could not be here this morning. Um, I hope all of you know that prior to being a senator, he had a small business, and so he had all kinds of pearls of wisdom that he was going to share with you. But um, he got called away, and our district director, John Frick, who was supposed to be here in his place, so I'm the third string quarterback, so, but, but welcome. Uh, Small Business Administration, they have so much information, and if you ever misplace their number, call us, because we have all of that. We are like Ma Bell of, you know, <laughs> seriously, a lot of people call us for, how do I get in touch with, so please, but have a great day today, and you're going to get lots of good information. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How are we doing, all right? Yeah. Hey. I know you. <laughs> hey, good to see you. Hey, um, thanks for coming out. Appreciate you taking time out of your day to visit with us. Um, let me start off by just thanking our host, Faith Penn, for uh, the lovely breakfast. For one thing, if you haven't had any of the uh, breakfast biscuits, are pretty tasty. Um, I'd like to thank SBA for organizing, the Faith Chamber for coordinating and promoting. Um, my name's Jim Conkle. I'm the director of the St. Vincent College Small Business Development Center commonly referred to as an SBDC. So I've been asked to take a little bit of time to just describe who we are and what we do and talk a little bit about our process of assisting potential entrepreneurs in launching their new ventures. Um, there are approximately a thousand small business development centers across the United States. In Pennsylvania we have 15. All right, We are all housed in colleges, universities, institutions of higher learning. Our role is really to serve as consultants, as community outreach to both existing businesses and prospective entrepreneurs, uh, pre-venture folks, helping them to start and grow their business. So as you can see, our mission is to provide quality education information and consulting to entrepreneurs. Our service is a no-fee service. We don't charge. We don't have to charge because the federal government through the Small Business Administration along with the state government and of course Fate Pen in this particular case help support our program. Now St. Vincent College, how many of you ever heard of St. Vincent College? I suspect most of you, right? Summer home in the Pittsburgh Steelers, right? Steeler Mason. Um, well the Trobe has St. Vincent College which is a small Catholic Benedictine uh, undergraduate institution and we're one of the 15 SBDCs in Pennsylvania. The SBDCs break their coverage down geographically. So St. Vincent College is responsible for Westmoreland and Fayette counties. I specifically cover Fayette County. So I get down here every other Friday. I meet with folks like yourself, small business owners, existing businesses, prospective entrepreneurs, and we try and assist them in any way we can to get them to where they want to go. Okay. 
So what does that mean? It means we work with businesses in every industry. There's no sector we don't work with. So one day I might be working with a retailer. <coughs> Later in the day I might be working with a manufacturer. We do a lot with professional services. We do a lot with contractors, um, a whole host of types of industries. We also cover businesses throughout the entire life cycle, from startup to high growth to existing, mature, and unfortunately in many cases, particularly when COVID hit, in decline. All right? So I, I, I'll be perfectly frank with you. Um, businesses can and do fail. We try and look at it objectively. We try and be the sounding board, if you can. You know, everybody has a dream. My experience, and I've been doing this for over 30 years, has been nobody ever starts a business in order to fail, right? Everybody wants to succeed, but unfortunately, businesses can and do fail. So we will never be able to eliminate that risk, but we can certainly reduce it. We can certainly reduce it, and we do that through a process known as business planning. We try and identify, how you doing? We try and identify your potential market. We try and measure that market. What's the size of the market? What's the competition look like? <clears throat> and we go through this process and along the way, hopefully we're able to capture or quantify some of those numbers. Put it into some financial projections. Try and determine, you know, things like what is my break-even point? What kind of profit margins can I realistically expect? What do I personally want to take out of the business? You know, and, and every case is, is individual. It's, it's, it's different. For some folks, they have a hobby. They enjoy it. It organically grows to a business. They're not really interested in making a whole lot of money. They just enjoy what they're doing. And that's fine. That's great. They're passionate about what they do. There are also individuals that, for whatever reason, downsized, laid off, they need to generate income. Entrepreneurs of necessity, they need to make income. Well, how much income do you need to make? What do you have to generate in terms of revenue to bring home that bottom line, if you will? Well, why is it important? Because it's important to understand what your goals are, what your target number is. A lot of people open businesses and they just sort of wing it. Okay, we, we've got there, everybody's our customer, and we're going to make as much money as we can. Well, maybe you will, maybe you won't, but I'll tell you what, you'll get a lot closer to your number if you know what your number is before you start the business. If you can identify, I don't know, I'm, I'm opening up, you hear about a bakery, I'm opening up a retail bakery. And this is an uncommon, I'll get a phone call, say, hey Jim, I'm doing 5,000 a month. I opened six months ago. And they're really excited, and I go, was that good or bad? What do you mean, doing 5,000 a month? Well. If your goal is to do 7,500 a month and you're doing 5,000 a month, you're probably not where you need to be. <clears throat> conversely, <clears throat> excuse me. Conversely, if your break even is 2,500 and you're doing 5,000, you're you're doing very well. We take the position that you should understand this up front. You should know it before you hang your shingle, because the more information you have, the more knowledge you have before you get into the, the operational details, because once, I can tell you, once you open the business, you know, it, it's bang, bang. You're, you're putting out fires, it's day to day, it's constant. You're dealing with employees and customers and vendors and lenders and on and on and on. So, again, we put a lot of emphasis on this business planning process. Questions, any questions at this point? Okay, continue on that. Okay. We're a rather small SBDC. It's myself and one other full-time consultant. We have an office manager. And then we backfill with student interns. So we use a lot of our students to help with research and, and, and so on and so forth. But again, what do we do? A big part of our program is based on what we call new venture creation. Trying to encourage individuals like yourself, many of you in the room, that are thinking about starting your own business. <coughs> I don't say this to be negative, just to be realistic. A lot of folks are hardworking, <coughs> enthusiastic, well-meaning, that start their own businesses and they're out of business in 18 months. They didn't want that to happen, they didn't mean for it to happen, but it happens. So to the extent that you can prepare yourself, and as I said earlier, reduce the risk of entrepreneurship, you're going to be better positioned 
to not only launch the business, but to grow the business. Because one of our mantras is, it's not how many businesses we start, it's how many businesses succeed, how many sustain themselves over the course of the long term. Um, so that idea of strategic business planning. I often ask new clients to say, paint a picture for me. What does your business look like in three years? I don't want to hear about today. Let's, what, what are you trying to accomplish? Mm -hmm. Now once we figure that out, then we can work our way to how are we going to get there. But give me a sense of the scope, the concept, the size of your business. We also do a lot in the area of capital acquisition <coughs> and financial analysis. So what does that mean? Financials are how you keep score. Okay? It's how you keep score. I'm big on making money. There are a lot of other reasons why people go into business other than making money. But money is what drives, it's the oil in the engine, it's, it's, it's cash flow, it's liquidity. You need to be able to determine how much money do I need in order to accomplish the goals I just mentioned. This is so cliche, I hate to say it, but I have to. It takes money to make money, right? It takes money to make money. I've met with individuals over the years that had good business ideas, but they didn't have any money. They weren't in a position to go out and leverage that good idea. So today, you know, we're fortunate to be joined by a number of um, lenders, micro lenders, <coughs> SBA supported folks that uh, are, shall we say, more flexible than banks, okay? They still have underwriting standards, but these are dollars that are um, invested in this area to try and generate additional business opportunities. So. Uh, I know these folks personally, and, and they're all good people, and we'll hear about some of their programs as we go along. Um, I mentioned we work with existing businesses. Um, we are tied into so much software. We have resources where we can do complete diagnostics on business operations. You know, your margins right, what's your liquidity look like, are you performing well relative to your asset size? So we do a lot of that type of work. We do a lot of market research. We're tied into industry, subscriptions, things that you can never find at a local library on the nature of particular uh, industries. Are they growing? Are they flat? Are they stagnant? What are the challenges? What are the opportunities? Um, demographic analysis is a big part of what we do. We'll sit down and we'll look at, you know, I have a coffee shop I'm working with right now down here, and we're trying to figure out, you know, where is the ideal location based on households, based on consumer expenditures, based on how much people spend away from home on coffee? Believe it or not, those are the kind of things you can find out. They're out there if you know where to go get them. I mean, the SBDC is one of the places where we're able to provide that information to you at no charge. But information is power. So if you have that information, you can chart your course. And that's not to say that, all right, we get to a certain point and say, oh boy, the market isn't really large enough to support this business, at least as I envision it. Well, that doesn't mean it can't support a smaller version of your business. Maybe instead of buying that real estate, can we lease some space? Okay, maybe buying all this expensive deluxe new equipment, maybe we can, you know, find a secondary market and buy some used equipment. So it's a, it's a matter of scale and customization. And we work with all our clients on a, as I said, one-on-one -on -one individual basis at no fee charge. So again, understanding your market, your competition, your target market. Um, if there's one thing that I would recommend or advise is think specifically about who is your customer. Think of a target market. Who can I present my concept to and know that I have a competitive advantage over the big box stores, the Walmarts, whatever. You know, you're not going to be able to be everything to everybody, but what niche, I heard that word earlier, what niche can I fulfill? So, uh, questions? Any questions so far? Okay. Just a little bit about the services. Um, 2023 was a good year for us. Now, for us, fiscal year, that means the federal fiscal year. So this ended the end of September. So as of end of September, we saw about 300 clients. Now, and as Janet indicated, the client could be anyone that I meet with for an hour, answer their questions, and never see them again. And I have other clients I've worked with for 25 years. So just depends on the situation. 
Um, we generate 2,200 hours. Now, we had about 32 new businesses out of our shop last year, which, you know, just to give you some proportionality, about half of our clients are existing businesses, so about the other half would be potential startups. So if we take the clients served and divide that to, say, 150, roughly 20% of those clients started their business. <clears throat> Is that good or bad? I don't know. But historically, that's been about where we've always been. All right. So along the way, along the way, during the business planning process, you can see that there are people, through attrition or whatever reason, figure out that it's not a good idea. This may not be feasible. All right. And that's okay. I mean, <clears throat> owning your own business can be exhilarating, can be extremely rewarding, but it's risky. And it's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. So to the extent that, you know, I would never tell anybody, no, you can't do that. I mean, it's still a relatively free country. I will provide them enough information that they may come to that conclusion themselves. You know, you want to open up the 25th pizza shop in Latrobe? Okay, you know how many pizzas you have to sell to cover that $100,000 career you had at PNC Bank or wherever? You know, it's going to take a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of effort. Capital formation, what do we mean by that? 7.2 million. Um, the SBA has goals. You know, they fund us, but you know, there's expectations that we perform. So one of those goals is capital formation, trying to make sure that dollars are getting into the local economy. So be it private sector, public sector, nonprofits, government, whomever, our consultants are pretty well briefed on what sources of capital are out there that will fund, support new businesses. And I can tell you, startups are risky. You know, a lot of conventional lenders, they, they shy away from conventional startup funding. All right. Now, fortunately, the group you're going to hear from today, those folks, that's sort of their target market and it's what they do. However, um, we are required to count that, to capture it. And so, you know, that's a good number. I think our goal was about six million, so we were able to do that. And also jobs. Of course, with new business, you, you want to hope and uh, uh, plan for growth. At some point in time, you're going to need employees. And of course, jobs are what builds our, our community and quality of life. All right, so. Interesting statistic, we do follow up surveys at the state level every year with our clients. 80% of our clients are still in business eight years after receiving assistance. That's, that's far higher than the national norms. Typically, and I've seen different data from different sources over the years, generally 50, maybe even 60% of new businesses fail within the first three years. Okay. Now, once you get through that three-year cycle, the probability of long-term success increases dramatically. But I can tell you that first year is really difficult. It's not uncommon to lose money in your first year. I mean, it happens. Um, but if you plan for it, it's okay. You can get through it. But, you know, rule of thumb, and rule of thumb are dangerous, I get that. But rule of thumb is you're going to lose some money in the first year, Let's try and break even by the second year, and let's turn the corner and start generating profits by the third year. Now, there are folks that have done it in a much shorter time frame. Maybe that three-year process is more like 18 months. But understand, you know, it takes time to generate awareness and build a brand and for people to even know you're out there. It doesn't happen, you know, on day one that you're going to just, you know, as they say, open the doors and hang the shingle and everybody's going to be there. So, um, I don't know, how am I doing on time? Am I okay here? Or, or can I go a few more minutes? Okay, sure. Uh, I just want to share some of these SBA figures with you. And you'll notice these are business failures. Why? You know, management incompetence, unbalanced expertise, and experience in the industry, on and on. Every industry has their own culture. They all have their own ways of marketing, pricing, 
promoting, purchasing, what have you. If you have some specific industry experience in the direction you're going, you're going to be at, a, at an advantage over someone that doesn't. Having said that, I can tell you that even during the pandemic, there is still so much opportunity out there. If you are able to, again, identify some sort of competitive advantage and leverage that, there, I can tell you, you know, technical skills, contract, electricians, plumbers, HVAC, those kind of folks, the demand is amazing. Demand is amazing, okay? However, you have to have a certain amount of objectivity. There has to be an analysis done in order to determine, again, the business plan, what is it we want to accomplish and how are we going to do that? And put a time frame on it and, and what have you. So the reason I bring this up is, again, not, not to dissuade you at all, just to impart some you know, reality here that it, it's, it's not easy, but as I said, it can be very, very rewarding. And for those folks that would care to engage in this business planning process with us, um, as I said, I'm here every uh, other Friday. However, you know, I, I have Zoom calls scheduled all the time during the week with folks from Fayette County. If you want to come to Latrobe, we welcome to you. Yeah, you're more than welcome to, but it, it's about an hour drive north of here. So um, I have brochures, I have business cards. I'll be around all day today. If you want to talk to me individually, we're happy to chat with you. But I uh, appreciate you listening, and uh, thank you for your time. So thank you all for <coughs> listening to me speak today. I've never done anything like this before. This is um, really exciting. and Thank you to everyone who invited me to be here today. Um, my name is Taylor. I am a local to the area. So I grew up uh, in Uniontown, went to Laurel Highlands High School, and I have zero background in business other than opening a business. So if you're sitting here in this room today and you're saying, I'm starting fresh, I don't have a background in business, it's okay, you will be okay. Um, I did it, I lived through it, and you just have to be ready to learn. That's a little bit that we'll talk about later. So in 2021, uh, myself and my now husband, Matt, said, okay, it's about time we open a business because I'm tired of driving to Morgantown to go to fitness classes. So um, I loved going to cycling classes in Morgantown. There's some really great facilities down there. I went to school in Pittsburgh for my higher education. So I went to Duquesne University for four years, took fitness classes there. And I knew that that was something that our area sort of lacked. We have our big box gyms and we have them in the plenty and they're, they're really great facilities. But something that I needed personally was that person in the front of the room telling me, let's get going, we're all going to do this together, and positively motivating me because I don't like the people that like yell at you and tell you what you need to do better. So definitely <laughs> positive mindset. So um, that's how Spin Unlimited came to be. Uh, we went back and forth for a while on what to call the facility and what, you know, what it was going to look like branding-wise, but we'll dive a little deeper into that. But we are located in Uniontown. If you're familiar with where Texas Roadhouse is, we're right next door in the same plaza as Sheila's home store. We're kind of down on the end. Um, big old sign, that's, that's what we look like right there. That's us one morning for a 6 a.m. class where the sun comes up in the summertime and it's so beautiful. Um, so first I wanted to go over my motivation. I think we all uh, have a little bit of a motivation when it comes to opening the business of our choice. I kind of touched on it a little bit. I don't have some sappy story about how fitness changed my life and how one day I woke up and I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I was raised by a small business owner. My dad owned a business in the local community for years, selling garage doors and installing them. And I was always so inspired by how present he was in our lives. Um, so I guess that's the sappiest part about it is that my dad was never missing from the dinner table and I knew I didn't want to be missing from the dinner table for my family. Um, and I know that sometimes when you get caught up into your you know, nine to five job or whatever it might look like for you, that's a possibility. So that's something I definitely wanted to build for myself that I could get away from. So. Uh, I knew that we needed a fitness facility in the area. Maybe Fayette County may or may not be one of the most healthy or not healthy areas in the state. That's to each other to decide. I love our county, so I won't talk negatively about it. They are the reason why I'm here. So we love Fayette County. Um, but yeah, that's sort of my why. So definitely identifying what your why would be. Um, so when I sat down and I looked at Matt and I said, Matt, I think we need to do this. I'm tired of driving to Morgantown. And he said, all right, well, 
let's do it then. And I think he thought it was going to burn out in about 24 hours. I, I'm like a little hamster wheel, so I've already established like 17 more businesses in my head that have fizzled out. So I think he thought it was going to go away. And then about seven days later, we had a website. And I owned the domain spinunlimited.com. And that's whenever it was like, okay, well, no one else can do this. Anyone I told, I made them sign an NDA. I was like, you're not stealing this. There's too many people in our town that could take it out from underneath of me. So I knew I wanted to keep it a secret, and I wanted to do the, the build out, and I wanted to make it a full-blown brand. That way, whenever I presented it to everybody around us, it was like, it was already there. There was no, I'm going to do this first type of thing. Because um, unfortunately, when it comes to business, if it's a good idea, someone else is going to do it. When I was like seven years old, I designed this brownie cutter that was like a grid mm. you could put down in a pan. I swear I designed that before the actual company that did it. <laughs> so they stole my idea. So I wasn't experiencing that again. So I uh, had our website. I knew who we wanted to be. I wanted to be a positive influence on the community. I wanted people to feel safe in our environment. I didn't want it to be condescending in any type. I've gone into gyms before, even the big box gyms, and just felt like self-conscious. I, I wanted to wear a big hoodie over my sweatpants and not have anybody watch me because I didn't know what I was doing. And I didn't want anybody to feel like that when they walked in our doors. I had zero certifications in fitness. I, I took a couple you know, workout classes in Morgantown, more than a couple. Had workout classes all through college, but I knew what I wanted out of a business. And so once I had that who are we down, I was able to sort of develop what I thought my business plan was prior to meeting Mr. Kunkel. Um, so <laughs> my business plan versus what he actually helped us out with was a lot. <laughs> my business plan looked a lot like this, developing what colors we were going to have, <laughs> what our social media logos were going to look like, and what our website looked like. And I highlight Canva on here because I definitely want everyone to know what that is before we walk away today. So that's a, that's a huge free item. Um, so when it came down to developing what our colors were, we sat down and we were like, all right, what do we want to do? These were actual photos, screenshots taken with timestamps on them from when Matt and I sat down. And I was really biased to this one. I was like, this is so fun, so exciting. And Matt was like, absolutely not. I would never walk into a gym that had those colors. That is for women and women only. So we went through it. I was like, well, we could go with the neutral vibe. And that's really trendy right now. And is neutrals going to be trendy in five years? Who knows? Kind of developed through it. This really spoke to the women. Worked our way down through. And we landed on this one here. And it, we said, okay, we have the blue for typical man and the pink for your typical woman. And we have a little balance between the two. I'm a pink person, if you couldn't tell. Um, we kind of knocked out the uh, gold there on the edge and landed with just our two colors being these two. So it was a lot of conversations in the background for what I thought was my, my branding piece. Um, we sat for hours and developed what we thought our logo would be. So it started out just on pieces of paper, spin you, S you. We didn't know what we wanted to do. We developed it a little bit further. We thought, you know, that kind of looks like a bike. But when it comes to figuring out, like, putting it on lo putting it on T-shirts, putting it on signs, putting it, we wanted to simplify it. We wanted as little vinyl when we cut it with our Cricut as possible because we wanted to <laughs> save money on the vinyl. So we landed with Spin Unlimited down here, and now... If you are in the fitness world, that brand, I'm very proud of it. It's, it's on a lot of places. It's on a lot of t-shirts. So we're really excited about that. Um, so that's just a little bit about how the development of the company went in terms of what I thought I needed to do. I knew there was more to it because people get four-year degrees in this. And I was like, there has to be more to it than that. Um, I have a friend. I'll talk about networking a little bit later in the slides. But I had a friend that... He had developed a business locally, um, Glade Pipeline. He's from the Farmington area. And one of our friends, his name's Patrick McChesney, and he sat down. We were like, we want to open a business. You opened a business. What did you do? And he said, I went down to Faye Penn, and they told me what to do, and they hooked me up with Mr. Kunkel. And from there, I was like, all right, I need to meet this man because <laughs> you have a great, successful business. So clearly, I need to meet whoever helps you get to there. So called Faye Penn, and I said, I need to, I need to talk to this Jim Kunkel man, who is, <laughs> I've heard so much about from Patrick, and they sat me up with a meeting, and I remember parking in this parking lot, walking in here, like, shaking, like, is this a dumb idea, Matt? Like, are we going to be able to do this? Like, and he was like, you have to be confident, you know what you're doing, you know what you're talking about, and we sat down, and we had a, a nice meeting upstairs, in the upstairs of this building, and he looked at me at one point in the meeting, and was like, you know, I think this is going to work, and I was like, holy cow, this is going to work. <laughs> like, it's not just going to be a bunch of bikes in a room and going nowhere. It's, it's, it's actually going to work. So um, there was a couple challenges throughout the, the process, not in terms of 
um, working with St. Vincent and the Small Business Association or anything like that, but just, just learning curves and timelines and all of that stuff. It was, it was kind of like I had a timeline formed in my head when I wanted to be open, and then we added nine months onto that, and that's when we were open. So that itself was a challenge because I'm an eager person, and I wanted to get our doors open, and I wanted to get people in the, in the facility. And first, the first challenge was that our, our landlord for our space was actually using our space as their office. And they needed to move to another space in the plaza in order to keep operating they own a lot of properties in the area, so they couldn't just close down and give us the key. They worked with us to store our bikes in their space, which is it's a large space. And every Tuesday and Thursday, we'd have classes in the parking lot. And <laughs> there we were, as Miss Betty, the secretary, was sitting at her desk, and we were pulling our bikes out, driving them over into the handicapped parking spaces in the parking lot in front of the bar room in Baltimore Life. I think they might have hated us all in the beginning because we were just... <laughs> cycling in the parking lot, but I think over time they grew fond of the music playing in the parking lot on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so um, we'll those out, and by doing that and taking that leap and saying to my landlord, like, hey, I know that you guys don't have a space for, to move into yet, but can we kind of meet in the middle and maybe I store my bikes here, have these classes? I paid for the first three months of rent just from having those classes in the parking lot and taking that leap. So that right off the bat, we had negotiated with them to have a couple months of free rent just to get ourselves you know, on our feet and do our build out and all of that stuff. But then on top of that, I already had the first couple months covered just by taking that leap and having those classes in the parking lot, which really wasn't anything near what the first couple slides of branding looked like. Um, I knew I wanted to have our classes in a dark room with neon lights and strobe lights, and that was the complete opposite of the Texas Roadhouse parking lot, <laughs> blaring with, like country music in the background and Luke Bryan and all that good stuff. So those were some of the challenges. I would definitely say a big challenge for me was the learning curve and learning what an LLC was and what a 1099 was and what just the different forms that you had to file and, and all of that stuff that went along with it was definitely a learning curve. My undergraduate degree is in pre-K to 4 education. They didn't teach me that whenever I was learning how to tell, teach kids how to spell. So um, that was definitely a learning curve for me. One of the biggest lessons for me all, at, like, all together was to just get real. I wanted to have brand new bikes. I wanted to have granite countertops. I wanted to have showers in both of our bathrooms. We do not have any of that. <laughs> and we're doing just fine. My husband looked at me and he said, Taylor, brand new bikes are used after their first ride. I said, okay, that's knocked me off my feet. That was a, a growing moment for me. I wanted the space, and this isn't speaking poorly about any space in Uniontown, but I wanted the space next to Starbucks. So that space that's vacant currently where there was a, another business in there for a little bit and that new plaza across from Walmart. I wanted that space so bad I would have probably died for it. It was a million dollar deal. Over 10 years I would have paid them a million dollars in the first three months I would have been bankrupt looking back on our statistics. So blessings in disguise definitely. We had a lot of praying on it, a lot of moments where it was like get real. You don't need to have the best of the best. You don't need to have if you're making the bakery you don't need to get a brand new oven you just need an oven that works I didn't need brand new bikes I just needed bikes that pedaled so those bikes have gotten us through we actually got connected with um, a fitness facility in Charlottesville Virginia that was upgrading their bikes they had a full fleet of bikes ready to go and uh, we connected with them drove down to Charlottesville borrowed a trailer from Patrick McChesney with Glade Pipeline it came full circle <laughs> and we hauled those bikes back to Pennsylvania where they live now up at 680 West Main Street so um, it's, it was a realization moment of get real because I needed to bring myself down to earth and realize that Soul Cycle, the number one cycling studio in the nation, has studios in like Los Angeles, New York City, Miami. That's, that's not what I am and realistically not what I'll ever be at the scale that I'm operating right now, but that's okay because that's not what our county needs. Our county just needed a place for people to go and exercise and move their bodies intentionally and to have a community around them, rallying around them, and that was my mission in the beginning. I want a really cool social media post to go behind it, but we could create that without putting ourselves into bankruptcy. So that was a huge learning curve for me. Um, we touched a little bit. I wasn't sure how, what the order would be whenever I made this PowerPoint. So touched a little bit on the Washington County Council on Economic Development. So funding a business. Whenever Mr. Kunkel was speaking up here about the people that maybe don't have, they have these really good ideas, but they don't have any money to get the business start, that was me. 
I had gotten a job after college making $15,000 a year being a traveling consultant for my sorority. And that's the money I had saved up that I banked that year. Not even that much, because I spent in the meantime. I like to shop, so I didn't have that much money <laughs> saved up. There's some things that I'll say, and I'm an open book, so you'll walk away from this, and Matt will nudge me in the car right home and be like, you could have definitely pocketed that away. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm an open book. So I went into this, I had like basically no money. I was in the process of, I was crazy, quitting my job from West Virginia University because I wanted to go full force into opening um, the studio. So was going through that process, cashed out all my vacation time, had that set aside with money, and was fortunate enough to get connected with the right people and the right time and get the business up and running, and here we are. Um, I think we fall into the category of the businesses that start making a profit in the more 18-month period. Um, the first year was definitely difficult, and there was times where April, hold your ears. I was sitting on the couch crying, and I was like, if every single check cashes right now, we are not going to make it. And so I don't want it to look like sunshine and butterflies up here, like it was all, all glory days. But we got through that month of September, and then we got hit with January, because everybody wants to work out in January, and that's what we needed. And we hit the ground running, and we were slammed from January through April, April and then we tapered off, and we had a steady summer this past summer. Um, our summer this summer was 60% better than the summer prior. So I think that's a pretty great increase. And now I'd say that we're pretty comfortable where we're sitting right now. I'd love to always have more people coming through the door, but we're paying our bills. Um, I don't take a paycheck from the business. That's not something that I ever went into this hoping for. I mean, I knew that it was a possibility one day maybe we'd be super successful and maybe I'd be able to get a paycheck from the business. But I knew going into it um, that we were going to be a single income household. Um, I still don't feel comfortable taking a check from the business. It's just I'd rather it sit in the bank account and if something were to happen than write myself a check and if I need it. So that's definitely something to be prepared for if you are planning on opening a business, just knowing that the money you might think that you're going to hit the ground running and have all this crazy income, um, it, it happens because you do pay your bills, but there's not that ro money rolling in and you're not going to be going out and buying brand new vehicles right off the bat and moving into a nicer, newer neighborhood. Um, just because you started a business and you're, you're successful. Uh, the importance of networking is definitely something I want to highlight. So I went out on a limb and shot about, I'd say, 75 to 80 Instagram messages to different cycling studios across the United States. I said, hey, my name's Taylor. I want to open a business in Southwest PA. I'm not in your competi competitive market. Um, if you would like to Zoom with me, that'd be amazing. I'd love to get some tips and tricks from you. What bikes did you buy? What audio equipment did you buy? Any of that stuff. I just needed to know all the things. How did you succeed in your first year? All of that stuff. Because if you remember correctly, opening our kickoff date was August 6th, 2021. That's, that's mid-pandemic. I was opening a gym during a pandemic, and I was, it was just difficult and crazy and hard. But um, all of these people came back. and. Some of the ones that gave me the most, the best information was a studio in Philadelphia, was Soul Beat Studio, and then Zoom Charlottesville, where we ended up buying those bikes from. They were awesome resources. And then also reaching out to businesses outside of your industry, and just getting to know, like, you know, who do you use for payroll? Who do you use for uh, different sources? Who makes your websites? Who does your graphics? All of that different stuff. Um, being willing to network with people outside of your industry as well. Um, and then business sustainability. So I chose the route to develop Spin Unlimited as an LLC, which is a limited liability company. I put the definition up here for anybody that might not know the definition. I'm not a slide reader, but um, it just means that the person opening the business is not liable for the company's debts. That's something I want to put a little asterisk next to because whenever I did sign um, for my small business loan, I did it is like associated with me. Um, so that's something that I definitely want to mark as like a little caveat there. Uh, but something that I was really nervous about going into this was, all right, Matt and I are about to get married. Um, I don't want to lose my house if my business goes under because you like Mr. Kunkel said, you never go into the bit, the opening a business thinking my business is going to fail. Yay. But it's realistic that it might. Um, so one thing that worked out for us was that my husband also opened an LLC and he actually purchased the bikes for us. Um, so it, that was on him with his own company. And so he now leases the bikes to Spin Unlimited. Um, so if the business ever does go under, we do have the things that we do have valuable within our 
business and that we used our loan for and all of that stuff, but we also will still have that asset, the most important asset from the business, which are the bikes, um, which we could flip around and still, you know, get ourselves out of a hole if we had to. So um, knowing how to like set yourselves up for success in terms of sustainability is huge. Um, that was something that I definitely did not do on my own. I definitely had Matt's help on that one. So it's nice to have someone that kind of balances out your crazy. <laughs> All right, so advice for aspiring entrepreneurs. So be ready to learn. Um, you don't want to go out and have to like, I'm so glad I did not go out and pay someone to make my website. I took the time to learn how to make a website. Squarespace.com was a great resource. I see some heads nodding in the crowd. Like it, if I can design a website on Squarespace, you definitely can. Um, it walks you through the process. It's relatively inexpensive to host your website every month. Um, you can drag and drop. You don't have to know coding. You want to drop a photo in, you just click photo and you upload which photo you want. Um, feel free to take some time. Look around on our website after today. It's just spinunlimited.com. I built that all out by myself with no help from anybody in the coding world and the IT world and I have no background in it. So definitely be willing to learn. I touched on Canva earlier, which is a great resource. Um, it's free, you can do the free option, canva.com. That's for your graphics, different photos that you're gonna share to social media. Um, that's a huge, great resource. Um, ChatGPT is huge right now, and if you're looking for ways to increase your engagement on social media and you don't know what to caption your photos, you can literally type into there, I need a caption for a photo, of a cycling studio while the sun is rising in the morning. And it's going to pop back a caption, 40 different captions for you to choose from. And you didn't have to do, I know I, you didn't have to do anything. AI is very scary in our world right now because it's like kind of taking over, but it's one of those things where you need to use it as an, your advantage in the business world. Um, so be ready to learn um, and use the resources that are already at your fingertips. So touching on a couple of those there. This is my favorite quote. Um, when it feels scary to jump, that's when you need to jump or else you're going to stay in the same place your entire life. So if you're sitting here and you're like feeling really fired up, there's butterflies in your stomach, that's when you need to jump and you need to say yes and you need to schedule the meeting with Mr. Kunkel. You need to schedule the meeting with, and, and get your loans moving. It's a relatively quick process. Get it going because there's no greater time than the, fu than the present um, in order to get you where you want to be in the future. Um, and then get comfortable with being uncomfortable. He was definitely right in saying that there's all types of different emotions tied to owning a business. There's the highest of highs and the greatest feelings when people are sending me messages and they're like, I've lost 65 pounds in the last year and a half and I no longer have to see my cardiologist because my heart is in much better condition and I don't smoke cigarettes anymore and I don't do this and all because I came into your community and I've been cheer cheered on along the way. Those are the highs the greatest feelings. I read those messages and I cry and I'm so happy. And then there's the other side of it. There's the complaints. There's the issues with employees and employees having issues with other employees. And then you're in the middle of the ocean like I was this past week on a cruise and you're getting messages about people and their feelings and their emotions and how they're unhappy with this. And so there are every, every single emotion tied to it. So it's not for the weak. You have to build build the thick skin and that's something that I had to grow on because in the beginning I would have been like firing off the message back and like what do you mean you're texting me right now and and it's definitely nice to have a little HR department along with it clearly we saw him be my IT department as well and he's our maintenance man so it's nice to have a nice partner along the process that helps you know mellow you out but um, definitely be ready for all of those experiences along the way um, it's a fun and exciting adventure do you have any questions if you have any questions. I'm an open book, so um, feel free to reach out. On, I'm on social media under Taylor Spa. I dropped the briner um, for social media. So um, I'm happy to add you on Facebook and chat. Or, go ahead. I have a question, but I have a comment that I, about your LLC. That it was just uh, in general, it was, um, you were talking about if you go under, but also if someone slips and falls off your bike and then you're not yeah. going to lose your house. Like, yes, yes. And that was important, too. I know I went, when... <coughs> With the loan, I also had to have life insurance policy to back that. So if something ever happened to me, they would get their money back. So I went through State Farm locally um, down on Main Street. Lauren Yeoman has an office down there. She got me my policy like overnight, basically, to have for that. And then she also had my like liability insurance and all the different insurances. And every single one of my instructors in the facility are also independent contractors. So they also have their $2 million umbrella policies. So if someone does get injured. And we've had people come to us and say, I have this injury and it's definitely because I took a spin class. I'm like, all right, well, 
brace for impact. Nothing's ever become of anything, but mm -hmm. I look at Matt and I'm like, thank God we have insurance because it's moments like that where you just hold your breath and wait for paperwork to come in the mail. Who's the insurance you use? I use State Farm with Lauren Yeoman. She gets it to me. And I know there's tons of different um, insurance agents in the area that can flip and get you insurance very fast, but Lauren's been great for us. Um, very quick turnaround in time. Text her and I'm like, I need to add this. And she's like, it's in your inbox. <laughs> Any other questions? All right. How'd you do on the Fayette County uh, best gym? We got first place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Definitely exciting. We got first place in that best of Fayette con contest, and then last year we um, came in second place in the Herald Standard. So definitely, we were only open for a few months, and we got voted for that. So that was exciting. That's awesome. Yeah. Is this your husband here? This is my husband. Yes. Okay. <laughs> he's our biggest cheerleader. Yes. Everyone. He he's our he's our cheerleader, our maintenance man. He fixes all the bikes. It's it's nice to have it all in house. So definitely helps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're around if you ever want to stop in and check it out. I mean, we've we've seen a lot over our past two years. We'll hit three years in August. So exciting stuff. So you basically really don't have payroll. You do everything 1099. So I, yeah, I have um, four women that work on our front desk and they are our employees and then everyone else is 1099. I do my payroll through Heartland. Um, I was with a different payroll company and I switched over to this one. It just worked better. I had developed a I guess working friendship with the person, but I know paychecks is also a really good option. Um, whatever works for your, your particular situation. Um, uh, I know entrepreneurs, they start their businesses with great intent, but how did you get customers in the door? Social media. Mm -hmm. Like, through and through. Social media. There's still people that call and say, even now, two and a half years, almost two and a half years later, what is this? Like, what, what is this? And so that to me is just eye-opening. And they live right down on Lebanon Avenue. Like, they're right in town. It's not like they're from out of town and just moved here. Like, so social media, um, I utilize the Meta Business Suite a lot. So that's associated. If you have a Facebook page, the Meta Business Suite is free. And it goes with the platform. And you can link it to your Facebook and your Instagram. You can schedule out your posts as far as you want out. So my we'll have a photo shoot, let's say in June, and I will post on our meta page and schedule them out all the way through, let's say September. I never have to touch my social media um, for those regular posts that just say like, hey, get your foot in the door, never miss a Monday. Like, let's celebrate Friday together. Just those engagement posts. Um, I schedule all those out, and then I know that right now, reels are really big and mm -hmm. TikTok and reels so if you if you can navigate that it's it's sort of challenging or if you can have someone that can support you navigating that the algorithm right now Instagram and Facebook push reels and all of those like type video type things to the top of the pages and the more that people interact with them then they see their your stuff more so navigating that is huge as well you said that was Meta page? Yes, Meta Business Suite. So you can access it just from your Facebook account, and it'll be over in like your account settings over <coughs> on the side, and you just hit Meta Business Suite, and you can share. And when you share your post, they, they push out to Facebook and Instagram, so you don't have to be on multiple platforms pushing it out. You can also schedule stories, which are only there for 24 hours. Um, they're the ones that just kind of pop up at the top of the page. How far in advance can you do that scheduling of the posts? I've had, I have stuff scheduled out right now through Christmas. Wow. So it's nice. I also work, I went back to WVU, so I also work full time at West Virginia University in the Visitor Center. So it's helpful for me because I work a full time job outside of owning the business and having a one and a half year old. So um, it's definitely helpful in terms of having work-life balance, just getting, sitting down for two hours, pushing all those posts out, using ChatGPT to navigate, you know, getting those captions in and making them effective. Because you want people to engage with your post because the more likes you get, if they like your post, and the next time that you post, you'll be on their feed again. So the more that people interact on your page, the more you're appearing on their timeline. And then you can also do sponsored posts within the Meta Business Suite. Um, and that's something I'll throw 25 bucks onto it every couple weeks, run a campaign for seven days, and it'll tell me, okay, well, you, you hit 7,000 accounts, 7,000 people have seen this. And you can link it to your website or to sign up for classes. It's, it's really, really simple. It sounds complicated, but you can't move to step B without finishing step A. 
Initially, we also used the Fayette County Chamber of Commerce and yes. for a grand opening. Yes. And it was posted in the Herald Standard, and that helped a lot. Yeah, definitely, <coughs> definitely joining the chamber is huge. I know that there's a, they have a huge initiative right now with the, the in group, and that's the in crowd or the in group. Yeah, so all we have, um, we just opened chiropractic within our facility, so we hired a chiropractor to come in, um, and they work out of our facility as well, so a little sliver of our space is reserved for chiropractics. Um, he, his entity also became a member of the chamber, so they had an additional grand opening at our location, free of charge, it was in the newspaper, all the different, you know, political head figures of the area were there, which was super nice to be supported. And we've seen them at different events along the way and they're like, oh, Taylor, how's the gym doing? Like they remember there's interaction. You get a weekly newsletter from the chamber with all the different events. Um, it is what you make of it. If you aren't us utilizing their services then it's on you kind of, you need to be sending them your um, upcoming events and upcoming sales and you know opportunities to get engagement and they'll send it back out. So definitely worth the however much it is a month. <laughs> Depends, on the Depends on the business. And I think you can do monthly or you can do yearly. Is that still the Quarterly case? Quarterly and bi -monthly. There it is, yep. It, it sounds, I don't want to sound cocky, but it's such a low amount of money and such a big, like, you get in return. I don't even know how much it costs. I just know that it's beneficial to be a part of it. Everyone's on? Oh, good. I have one more question. Yeah, go ahead. As far as um, internet resources, for handling finances, do you have a particular one that you've found works so well? So like QuickBooks? Mm -hmm. QuickBooks. Yeah. So I like QuickBooks a lot. I haven't ever even ventured out into a different um, option. I know in the beginning, um, I, I don't know if this is still the case or not, but there was like a promotion. There was like the first few months were covered and then, um, then you had like you were just a subscription. So I think I pay like $28 a month. I can go in there, I have my credit card, the business credit card and the business debit card linked to it. So any transactions automatically funnel through there and I just have to tag them. And at the end of the year, I just give my, I give access to my QuickBooks to my accountant and he goes in and does everything for me. So there's not much, I just have to select the report that I want him to view, give him access to it by his email. I don't touch anything else because I also didn't go to school for accounting. So right. that is something mm -hmm. I don't kudos care. I should have. Kudos to you for using an accountant. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. That, that was something, and, it, and you know, tax season does get crazy. It is as crazy as accountants make it out to be. Mm -hmm. I, you will, like, you might not, but I have filed an extension the past two tax seasons, and it's just, I just utilized that opportunity, got my taxes done, he helped me through it, and it, it was what it was. It, it's stressful, but um, they make it way less stressful than it would be otherwise. And Heartland, the, where I go through for my payroll, they file all those necessary tax documents as well. So I don't have to like be pooling or saving any money. It's already pooled. Okay, thanks. See, I use QuickBooks. I absolutely... Hate it. See, Amen. Oh, my mom. Oh Amen. my God. Amen. So my mom hated I went from QuickBooks. Desktop to online. Yes. <laughs> so my mom hated the desktop version, and then I tried to switch her over for their small business to the online version. I love the online version because <coughs> I never knew the desktop version. So if you're someone that maybe is moving from one to the other, but I have QuickBooks on my phone. If I have a receipt that I need a document, I just take a picture of it, and it's in there. Everything's documented, yep. super organized. So. It's just, it takes a little bit of time to get used to, but once you get your tagging down, and I actually sat down with my accountant and we created what tags were more like associated with my business and like what was more relevant, and now I know which ones to use for you that. You can create rules, so if you have like a monthly bill, it yes. automatically goes to where you made the rule for it to go. Yeah, but so if it's like you monthly, you have an Amazon subscribe and save, which we do for our paper towels it'll automatically rule that to the same bucket mm -hmm. every month. And I don't have to touch that. But so many people do use QuickBooks. Yeah, yeah. That's the one I found to be the most successful. Yeah, I just, I, I, I've been scared to use QuickBooks at all. I, I, I'm an Excel spread per, spreadsheet person, and yeah. you know, I've got one <clears throat> totally customized to my business. Now, am I an expert in Excel? No, but yeah. I, I'm just like, I'm so anchored almost to that. I just don't want to sink, but, yeah. you know, I just I, I just plug in the stuff. I kind of know where it goes. And yeah. 
I don't, I'm kind of interested to know what everybody else, you know, folks are more into doing their own rather than QuickBooks. Something. They typically have a trial, free trial. So yeah. you can go on, get the free trial, cancel it if you don't like it, and just kind of mess around on there and plug in. I, I know that YouTube's also a really good resource for, I have had to go on there. I also use TikTok for uh, the different hacks, I guess you could say, on how to navigate the platform. So when I first got QuickBooks, I did watch a bunch of YouTube videos on how to navigate that side of it. Okay, that's yeah. awesome. We'll be having a, a QuickBooks workshop at some point. We don't have it scheduled yet, but we're, we're trying to do these, we're trying to do these like masterminds, you know, um, it, that's kind of the umbrella it's under, but trying to do these workshops like at least, you know, once a month, if not every like other month as we can get them scheduled but um definitely we'll you know we'll make sure that you're all on you know the kind of the distribution list um so as you know those courses come you know that course comes up and then um i know we want to do a search engine optimization one too at some yeah. point so yeah i know you, you touched on you know both of those other yeah the funny thing is this year I've always been an April 15th taxes done last week. Finally filed my taxes for last year. We're in this together. Don't worry. Mine was only like oh, three weeks ago. Online. <laughs> that, was, that was me about three to four weeks ago. So it's okay. The first time I like held my breath and was like, I'm illegal. But it won't go to jail. Yeah, it turns out you don't go to jail if you do file that extension. It's actually, you reduce your chance of getting all of these. Yeah, yeah. really. Huh. That's why I hired an accountant. Do you that? I'm not late. <laughs> there, it reduces your chance of getting audited, he said, if you file that extension. Can we extend again? <laughs> <laughs> You're done. You're done. You're done. Call up Mr. Rydell and ask him. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's the background guy. Oh, I'm just going to count. Everything but not, the account. Yeah. Um, I think I have to use we, They're not that expensive. Yeah. yeah, definitely. It's yeah. worth it. Worth yeah. every penny. Yeah. Definitely yeah. worth every penny. And then you have a buffer between account. yourself and the IRS, too. Yes, yeah. and you, that's if not, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but you want to make sure you have a CPA to, like, sort of, to buffer. Yeah, to be the buffer. And I can tell you from a lending perspective, every single lender in this room prefers to see CPA uh, prepared financials. Yes. Um, just because it's... Having somebody that, that does that for a living, taking a look at you know all of the expenses and, and categorizing everything correctly, you know sometimes with QuickBooks and automated systems like that, through no fault of the entrepreneur, things can get miscategorized because computers are not as smart as people think they are. Yes. Um, so having a human that human interaction to take a look at and say, oh, that section needs to be shifted over here, and seeing those accountant prepared financials gives us as lenders. <coughs> Uh, uh, more confidence to lend to you, uh, yeah, you know, moving forward. Right. The goal for twenty. With our accounting firm, I pay a flat fee every month, so then when they actually do the taxes, I don't have a huge yeah. tax bill. I know that that's how some people do that, so I've definitely heard of that being an option. The goal for twenty twenty five is to open up a second location. So we'll see. We'll see if we if we're back in this room in a couple years. But we've had we've had one location in Morgantown reach out to us, a real estate agent, and said we have a we have a space. We want a gym of your size. Will you open a second location? Wow. Nice. wow. I said no. <laughs> I was like no, no, not yet, not yet. I I had to turn that one down because it was Morgantown's tough. Morgantown, there's like nine fitness facilities within a mile and a half. So. And the college isn't doing well. Yeah, yeah. WV is not, not really mm -hmm. thriving right now, so it's definitely a scary time. But Greensburg, Washington, somewhere around there, we'll see if Spin U 2.0 will be a thing in the future. Talk to me later. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Talk definitely. about Morgantown. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I will say you're smart to approach that slowly because... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Growing too fast can mm -hmm. sink you too. So. Yes, yeah. We definitely want to play it safe and get ourselves in a position where if I have to leave my full-time job again, <laughs> round two, we're, the WB is going to hate me by the end of this. Um, but um, they keep letting me back, so it's okay. <laughs> but we, don't, we didn't want to put myself in a position where I wasn't, like I said before, being present in my family. So that was definitely, I want to be present with my husband and my daughter and also be a part of the community in the gym. So I don't just want to be the person behind the computer, I want to be behind the front desk too. So 
Thank you all so much for listening and asking so many engaging questions. Well, thanks for everyone for showing up today. So I'm bringing it home, okay? Then we've got okay. the lenders here as well, okay? okay. So um, my name's Lynn. I'm from the Small Business Administration. I am the lender relations specialist, kind of the connection between um, our SBDCs and our micro loan lenders to make sure that you understand how this all starts to tie together. That's kind of the over broad view that I'm going to talk about today. So we have three programs at SBA, 7A Pro program lenders, the 504 lenders, which are certified development companies, and today we have with us our micro loan lenders, and that's why we've carved out time at the end. I know some of you were networking before, which is really good, <laughs> but we were going to plan on work networking after so you can continue your conversations with Jim or me or Janet or any of our lenders. Um, but I'm going to cover all of these in a kind of a broad spectrum so you know where to go to see these resources and view where the lenders can be contacted. So to start out, um, usually my hyperlinks are in the headers um, that take you to the websites of where you need to read a little bit more about the programming or about our microloan lenders. Um, so SBA loans will start you with the 504, the 7A, and the microloan program. But I'm also going to provide this. So you're going to get a PDF of the piece of paper that you've got in front of you. This is our resource guide that was printed, the last one in a PDF version back in 2020. Okay. So you're going to get a copy of this as well. Now they have put things in the National Resource Guide. It's online if you want to read that. And I have some of the newer ones that are on the tables over here. But in this old guide, they spent a little bit more time breaking things apart. So our bank lenders that lend in the 7A program, you'll find them on page 29. And some of you may be doing your regular banking with them now. Okay, You just didn't know they used an SBA to make their loan. Um, our certified development companies, they're on page 31, and all of our microloan lenders are on page 31 in this book as well. But I've cheated and I've given you even better information. Yep. I'm sorry to uh, interrupt because I don't know much about this. Could you just define, will the 7A versus 504 yep. things be defined better in this package that you're going to provide? Yeah, I'm gonna, well, I'm going to talk to you about that. Okay. Now. <laughs> That's the next slide. Oh, okay. <laughs> you just didn't turn the page fast enough. <laughs> all right. So. 7A loans, okay, so this is the, our umbrella program, all right? SBA does not do any direct lending except for disaster loans, okay? So you don't come to the SBA to get an SBA loan. In this case, 7A loans, this is where you're working with banks, okay? And you may be, like I said, banking with a bank right now that is a 7A lender, all right? When you think about these types of basic uses, you're talking about long-term and short-term working capital. Okay, you could be talking about maybe you need equipment, maybe you need real estate. These are the lenders that you would go to in order to get those bigger ticket items. All right. Um, what I've done is there's a hyperlink at the bottom. It talks about the different types of 7A loans. All right. But what we're going to do is I'm going to tie what Jim is talking about to exactly what you need to have prepared before you talk to any lender. Okay. Now, I'm not saying the lenders here today. You know, we still want you to talk to them, but things that you need to be prepared to start to have a conversation. And that's why Jim and St. Vincent are so vital in anything that you're going to start to pull together. So these are bank lenders. So if you're talking local banks, you know, you, yes, we've got banks that are out there that, you know, it can be something simple like Farmers National Bank, you know, things like that. You'll see them listed in our, in our book. The 504 loans, this is really when you're thinking about purchasing real estate or renovation of a piece of real estate or it's large pieces of equipment that are fixed to the ground. So if you're in manufacturing, this type of loan actually brings in two other types of lenders aside from yourself. We're talking about a certified development company. Okay, they contribute a certain amount of the loan. A regular lender also contributes a certain amount to, of the loan. The minimum you would bring to this is a minimum of 10%. The reason that they would ever ask you to bring more money is you're looking at how old is your business. If you're under three years, they're going to want you to bring more to the table. If it's a single-use building, and when I say single-use, think a hotel. If you wanted to put a hotel up, they're, they're going to make you bring more money. But ideally, this is, these are great things that eventually you may graduate onto because you're going to need more dollar amounts. All right. But the one I want to focus on today is our microloans. And here's the reason why. They don't provide any banking services. You're not going to get a credit card from them. You're not going to do your daily deposits with them. And they're in the room today. Okay? 
And the thing is, is that when we look at what Jim's going to provide, you're going to have to develop a business plan, which means that you're going to have to come up with, if you were doing contracting, a capability statement, or an executive summary. Okay, lenders want to read that. They want you to be able to talk about it. So Jim's not going to write it for you. You're going to do the writing. He may be talking to you about editing it, because we all kind of talk a little too much sometimes, share too much, and get you down to where it's something that a lender can have a better conversation and can have uh, a better idea of what you want to do. In microloans, the bonus here is, is they're required to provide technical assistance. And I know Fat Penn was talking about doing some QuickBooks, you know, but there are other things that the microloan lenders are required to do. Maybe you need some help with marketing. That's what they're there for. So now you've got two different groups that are in your corner. Jim, to get you started with your financials, talking about your executive summary, what does your business do? And as you grow into this microloan lender, wouldn't they lend $50,000 and under? And that's why we invited them here today. Because sometimes we don't have to start with large dollar amounts. We need those small dollar amounts to get you started. And so that you can start paying back a loan. Because you're still going to be doing a bank, you know, you're banking with someone else. Now you've got a relationship. You've got your person who's doing your business banking, helping you do your deposits, maybe a credit card. You're working with a microloan lender who's lent you a little bit of money, working capital, that type of thing, and you're starting to pay that back. You've got this relationship. So that's the main thing when we're looking at microloans, is that it's an opportunity for you to borrow a small amount to get you started. You start to build that reputation of being able to repay that loan. So when you do go to a bank, you now have your business plan, you have your financials, you've already started working with someone, you have one loan out there, you're starting to pay that back. It becomes an easier way for you to transition to talk to a lender where you may need additional dollars. Or maybe you're eventually going to buy a piece of real estate because that's what you want. You don't want to rent any longer. So it's all these little steps that start that you don't start out by jumping into the first big deal, million dollar deal. It's these smaller dollar amounts and understanding exactly what your financials are. So that's the bonus between using both Jim's program and starting out small with a microloan lender. Now, when we're talking about seeking that business loan, you know, we know, we're gonna check it off. You're gonna start talking to Jim. You know, he's gonna start to, that conversation with you and you're gonna work on that business plan. And as I said, there's another programming in, that's out there that you can do online to try and find a lender, but all the same content is there. You still have to be able to tell them what your business does. You need to be able to talk about the amount and use of your funds. So right now, if you're not quite sure, you know you need to buy an oven, okay? Did you go out and get a couple bids? Do you know the benefits and features of that oven that you possibly want to purchase? How soon is it going to be delivered? Okay, what is that benefit going to be to you? Those are the things that lenders are going to expect you to be able to provide to them and start to have a conversation. Okay, so what I did is I took a couple things here with all of our microloan lenders. I've given you the hyperlink to get to their website, and they're going to introduce themselves when they're here, and I know Faye Penn is going to introduce their lender as well. This allows you to take a look at, at this website. Um, Bridgeway Capital, they do cover this county. You'll see a couple here at the end I'll show you all kind of, each of them have certain counties that they're allowed to lend in, but Bridgeway Capital lends in this area. Washington County Council, April's here today. Um, they lend in this area. And Pursuit, they lend statewide. So even if you had friends in Center County, let's say, um, you know, Steve could talk to them as well. Um, Neighborhood Community Development Fund is another one of our microloan lenders. They only lend in the county of Allegheny County. And then the last one that I have here is Jari. So if you know anybody that it may be in the Indiana, Cambria County, Blair County, Somerset, um, Jari covers that area as well. And then I just wanted to say thanks both to Faye Penn and, and, and Jim and our microloan lenders for coming here today because the main point was is to kind of give you an idea of where the information is and for you to take the time to talk to each of the lenders um, to see what may fit actually into your, your programming. And that's kind of what I've got today. So if you wanted to, do you want to do an introductions now to the lenders and sure. we can break it apart? So I'll start with um, you know, Reed, if you want to kick us off with just an introduction of who you are and sure. what you cover. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Reed Smith. Uh, I'm with the Bridgeway Capital's Uniontown office. Uh, my background was in commercial banking for many years and then 
I've been with Bridgeway for about the last 10 years and uh, it's it's been great because I enjoy working with small businesses uh, that was really my focus with uh, in the commercial banks and then they just seem to gravitate more towards larger customers uh, Bridgeway is a uh, nonprofit mission focused lender uh, we tend to focus on low to moderate income areas an additional focus is uh, you know women borrowers veteran borrowers minority borrowers so um, if I could stress a couple things that you've heard, one is that is that business plan is is critically important, and I encourage you to know it inside and out, be comfortable discussing it. Um, I think you know Taylor mentioned you know I, I I think when she started working with Jim, she said she was nervous, but I think she also had the confidence. So you need to be able to explain to us, you know, the assumptions around your financial projections. Just don't present them to us and think we're not going to have questions. So, the more confidence you can show us, the more we're going to have confidence in you. So, um, the other thing I would mention is to have an idea of what's on your credit report. If there are some credit issues you need to address, I would say to do that before coming to one of the lenders for a loan. So, but I'm happy to speak with you uh, in the networking later. Thank you. Ready for go. <clears throat> Hi, I'm April with Washington County Council on Economic Development. Um, I mean, I agree with everything we said. Garcia. 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 Um, I have cards and brochures over there, but I mean, obviously, we did we did Taylor's loan, and uh, whoever Lori you spoke about today, Main Street Cafe is actually on our brochure. Yes, it so is. we did we did that loan. Um, I cover six counties in southwestern Pennsylvania, so I cover Washington Green, Fayette, Westmoreland, Allegheny, Beaver. We're also a nonprofit, and um, we're like we're a general lender, though. Um, like as Bridgeway is focused on the low to moderate and women-owned minority businesses, um, we'll do anywhere in the county. So anywhere in the counties that we cover, anyway. We also cover 38 counties in West Virginia and five in Ohio. Wow. I'll, I'll be here as well. Morgantown's one of them, right? Yeah. Okay. Steve, you're Hi, I'm Steve Meredith. I'm from Pursuit. Um, as uh, Lynn said, we uh, lend anywhere in Pennsylvania. We actually do loans in four different states. Pennsylvania is one of them. We do New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut as well. Um, but we uh, do micro loans. Uh, we do SBA 504 loans. We do SBA what are known as Community Advantage loans, which are, is our 7A product. Um, the nice thing is we have loans for just about any business purchase and f just about any uh, any businesses in any stage of the business life cycle. So whether you're a startup, whether you're existing, anything like that. Um, I echo Reed's comments as well. Um, I think you heard me say that I, I love to see uh, accountant prepared interim financials because they just give us so much more confidence to lend to you guys when they are, are processed by an accountant, things like that. Um, yeah, so come talk to me. Uh, if you're in need of, of anything, we could fund equipment purchases, we could fund real estate purchases, we could fund working capital as well. Um, so yeah, come talk to me. Okay. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Ben Siebert. I uh, work here at Faye Penn uh, with Lori just right upstairs. So uh, first and foremost, thank you all for coming and being here in our launch box for this presentation. Um, I'll just echo a lot what April Reed and Steve said. Uh, we do have our own loan program here as well. Uh, we do lend to startup businesses. Um, we are uh, Fayette County centric, so we, we do only lend in the county primarily. Um, and if you are a startup business, we do um, require you to go through Jim Kunkel. So Jim and I work closely together. He's obviously here bi-weekly. Um, you know, him and I speak to, well, I, I refer a lot to him. Uh, he was just on the radio show with me uh, a couple weeks ago. So um, we do require that. Jim does a great job. It is comprehensive business planning. So, you know, everything from marketing to projections and whatnot. And uh, like Steve and Reed and April said, it really allows us to wrap our minds around, you know, what your background is, if your projections make sense, and, and, and all the everything soup to nuts to what we need to take to our loan committees to, you know, go to bat for you for this uh, startup loan. So, um, again, if you have any questions, let us know. Um, and again, thanks for coming. So, I, 
what we've done is we've always just worked on the networking after this. So if you haven't had a chance to talk to one of the lenders, you know, maybe now is the time that you take the, the opportunity to. If you have questions about the microloans, and the more lenders you talk to, the more you know exactly who you may want to work with. So um, I, I don't usually close these things, but I guess I could close it. So I do appreciate you all coming. And um, like I said, we're going to stay, and as long as you guys all need to stay and have a chat, we will still be here. And we're not going So, and other than that, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Masterminds Business Education Seminar has been brought to you by Fay Penn Economic Development Council and the Fayette Chamber of Commerce. Are you a member of the Fayette Chamber? Join the in-group today. Contact Ashley Howes at the Fayette Chamber of Commerce for more information.